What's up everyone, Tavius here, and today we have to talk about the Path of the Burning Steps. It seems everyone is loving the new Lorely Splendor and their invincible builds, but I believe Path of the Burning Steps deserves a little love with Solar 3.0. Plus, some of you might not have that exotic helmet yet, so today we're breaking down an effective way of using the exotic, starting with the subclass breakdown with the axes and fragments, then we'll go over the armor and armor mods, and last we'll go over some weapon recommendations. Let's begin! So the first thing I want to go over is what the burning steps do for those of you who are not familiar and to help the aspects and fragments make more sense. Firewalker. Solar final blows periodically grant you an escalating bonus to weapon damage. Solar final blows could be solar weapon or ability. The escalating bonus to weapon damage means any weapon, kinetic, energy or heavy. It lasts 10 seconds and could be extended by getting more kills. The escalating bonus to weapon damage is 20% with firewalker times 1. 25% with Firewalker times 2, 35% with times 3, and 40% with times 4, which is the max. So you can give your weapons a 40% damage boost in PvE with this exotic, which is a bit less for PvP, around 35%, but it's still really good. How to proc it? It could take between 1 and 3 kills to get the first stack, but it's usually after your second kill when it starts, and from there it's a snowball effect. There it is. So now for our subclass. We've got Hammer of Soul. Also a Rally Barricade, which grants us extra reload speed, stability and range while standing behind it. For high level content, Tower Barricade is a better option to get the extra protection. For my melee, I'm doing Hammer Strike, but if you like throwing Hammer, that's great too. Hammer Strike will scorch and ignite the target and also create a sunspot in its place. Great for heals. We'll go over that with the aspects. For my grenade, I'm using the Fusion Grenade. It has a pretty fast cooldown and I just really like the small tracking it has. Great for PvP also. Okay, so for the aspects, we've got Soul Invictus and Roaring Flames. Soul Invictus creates sunspots with any solar ability fan of lows. Like I said, my Hammer Strike Melee, Fusion Grenade, Hammer of Soul Super, and defeating targets affected by Scorch will all spawn sunspots. And entering a sunspot grants us restoration, healing. So when in a tough situation, just look for your nearest sunspot, and you're good. Roaring Flames. Final blows with solar abilities or ignitions increase the damage of your solar abilities, stacks 3 times. While Roaring Flames is active, your uncharged melee deals solar damage and scorches targets. I found this really useful after using Hammer Strike to get a kill. You immediately get Roaring Flames and can continue punching other low level enemies and applying Scorch and ignitions, which at the same time keep extending Roaring Flames, all with your melee uncharged. And now we're moving on to the fragments. We've got the Ember of Empyrean. Solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration or radiant effects. We're not really going for radiant with this build because our exotic grants us the weapon damage buff, but extending restoration is what we're going for. The Ember of Char. Your solar ignitions spread scorch to affected targets. Our melee, our grenade, and our super all spread scorch and ignitions. Plus, defeating any scorched targets creates a sunspot. Don't forget about those sunspots. Next, we have the Ember of Blistering. Defeating targets with solar ignitions grants grenade energy. And the last Ember of Eruption. Solar ignitions have increased area of effect. This one gets even better with a certain weapon. We'll go over that in a second. Moving on to our armor and armor mods. On my helmet, I've got Hands On for extra super energy with my Hammer Strike and Seeking Wells to have all those solar elemental wells come to us. On my arms, I've got an Unstoppable Scout or any champion mod you need. Then Elemental Light to spawn solar elemental wells with super kills. Wells that will come to us with Seeking Wells. For my chest piece, I've equipped Armor of the Dying Star for the extra protection from solar and void damage. And Explosive Wellmaker. Rapidly defeating combatants with explosive damage spawns a solar elemental well. This includes grenade kills, hammer strike kills, and super kills. Now for our exotic, the burning steps, I've got Absolution, which reduces all ability cooldowns picking up a normal power. And then I have High Energy Fire, a Charged with Light mod. While Charged with Light gain a bonus to weapon damage. Each defeated combatant consumes a stack of Charged with Light. Now if you don't want to do Charged with Light, you can do Font of Might instead which actually applies the same exact bonus to weapon damage on top of all the stacks of Firewalker you will get with this exotic. The main difference between Font of Might and High Energy Fire is that Font of Might grants you a timed weapon damage boost for 10 seconds. 
then it goes away and you have to grab another solo elemental well to proc again. With high energy fire, the weapon damage boost doesn't go away until you get a kill, and this makes a huge difference when you're dealing with the boss. You could keep your bonus damage for the entire damage phase if you don't get a kill, but then again, killing adds will spawn elemental wells, which will grant us two stacks of charge with light with the elemental charge mod I have on my class item. So you will always have your bonus weapon damage with high energy fire going, and that's on top of what our exotic legs already do. The other two mods I have on my class item are totally swappable depending on what weapon you're using or the seasonal artifact mods available. I've been swapping between Flame Harvesting to create Solar Elemental Wells with Solar Exotic Final Blows, Molten Overload to stun Overload Champions with my Fusion Grenades, and I've also equipped Solar Fulmination when I'm using one of the new weapons with the Incandescent perk, and Withering Heat of course. All those are great, and remember that all of our Sunspots grants us Restoration, so Classy Restoration is not really needed here. It is time to talk about some weapons, so let's start with the Energy Slot. Reason we're using Flame Harvesting is because Polaris Lance, the exotic scout rifle, is really fun to use with this build. This weapon exotic trade is the perfect fifth. Precision hits return ammo to the mag. Landing four precision hits loads a delayed solar explosive round for your next shot. I have to say, this weapon is a laser beam. It is so stable, it will be super easy to land precision shots, even more on bosses who don't move very fast. Although some of those overload champions can be annoying but landing all precision shots will keep reloading your weapon and its primary ammo, so infinite ammo. Sadly, this weapon doesn't spread Scorch to target since the explosions from it are considered Dragonfly explosions, not ignitions. But that's okay because kills with this weapon will spawn Solar Elemental Wells to get us charged with light and also our stacks of Firewalker with our exotic legs. So we can give this weapon a 40% damage boost plus the high energy fire boost on top of that. Now don't forget that these weapon damage boosts also apply to your kinetic and heavy weapons. So with this exotic scout I paired a shotgun, the Fortissimo 11. I like to go in with a hammer strike melee and stand on the sunspot, swap to this shotgun and melt. We can also take advantage of the damage boost with our heavy weapon, even better if it's solar, so luckily we have the ascendancy rocket launcher. Now another way to go about this build, if you have worked your butt off to get a crafted Kalos mini to SMG this season. And if you manage to get it to level 16 to reshape it with the enhanced incandescent trade, this weapon just shreds. It is so stable, it spreads scorched and ignitions, and I also have the enhanced unrelenting perk to get healing. This weapon with fire walk at times 4 and high energy fire going is so much fun. Literally everything blows up. If you go this route, you would swap your flame harvesting for solar fulmination on your class item, and maybe withering heat would make a good addition. I would add Arbalest to my kinetic slot since it comes with anti-barrier and it's a really good long range weapon. Ok, so with this Titan Path of the Burning Steps build, we're going to gain a bonus to weapon damage of up to 40% with our exotic legs, with an extra on top of that with a charge with light and high energy fire. Our melee, grenade and super all spread scorch and ignitions which will have an increased area of effect with the ember of eruption, grant grenade energy with the ember of blistering and spread scorch to effective targets with the ember of char. Defeating scorched targets will create sunspots with the soul invictus aspect to grant us restoration while standing in them. Also the ember of empyrean will extend the duration of restoration applied to you. Our Polaris Lance Exotic will be benefited by the Burning Steps Exotic and generate lots of Solar Elemental Wells with the Flame Harvesting mod to keep the loop of abilities and the high energy fire going for all our weapons, around a 50% weapon damage boost, including the Ascendancy Rocket Launcher. And there it is guys, I really don't understand why everyone is so obsessed with the new Lordly Splendor when Burning Steps is superior in my opinion. I mean, for PvP I can see why, but for PvE, Burning Steps is where it's at. If you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to like and heavy attack that subscribe button, please. My name is Tavius Plays, let me know in the comments what you think about this. I thank you for your viewership, and if you want to watch other Infrared Destiny 2 videos, you can click here. 